Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Brady, and I want to thank you for joining me today. So have you ever heard of the term osteosarcopenia? It is a combination of the words osteoporosis and sarcopenia. And I'm sure you're all quite familiar with the term osteoporosis, but if you, but you may not be familiar with the term sarcopenia. So sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass and muscle strength, which can then lead to a decline in your physical abilities and your physical function and leave you feeling weak and fragile. So osteosarcopenia is where osteoporosis and sarcopenia collide and you lose both muscle or bone mass and strength as well as muscle mass and strength. And this term has just recently been created because of the fact that these two conditions frequently coexist, especially with aging. But it also solidifies my belief that osteoporosis is not just a disorder of the bone, but a muscular skeletal disorder. Your bones and your muscles are intricately connected and very dependent on one another. So not only do they physically support one another, your bones keep you upright and provide a place for your muscles to attach. And then your muscles move your bones and provide us with movement. But they're also intricately connected through biochemicals that circulate through the body. Your bones and your muscles actually talk to each other through these chemicals. And this is known as bone muscle cross talk. So one of the ways that muscles and bones talk is through specialized proteins or hormones called myokines and osteokines. So your muscles secrete myokines and your bones release osteokines. And one myokine that's getting a lot of attention in research is called irisin. And irisin is released from the muscles during exercise when you're contracting your muscles. And the studies show that irisin, when released from the muscles, goes to the bones, talks to the bones, and tells the bones to get stronger. And what the research is showing is that irisin increases bone mass and stimulates bone formation. And it does this by encouraging the production of more osteoblasts, the bone cells that make new bone. And it looks like it actually increases both cortical bone, the bone on the outside, as well as trabecular bone or the bone inside that creates the structure and the quality of your bone. And then in return, your bone cells make a hormone-like substance called prostaglandin E2, which promotes muscle growth and repair. So you can see that muscles and bones really do depend on each other. So the muscles produce irisin, which talk to the bones and tell bones to turn over and get stronger and make new bone cells. And then the bones secrete prostaglandin E2, I mean, Yes, the bones secrete prostaglandin E2, which then talks to the muscles and tells the muscles to get stronger. And that's why exercise is such a critical component of bone health. We know that impact exercise is important to strengthening the bones because the force that's generated when your foot hits the ground creates a mechanical stress that stimulates bone formation. And interestingly, this mechanical force through the bone appears to also significantly increase the production of that prostaglandin E2 from the bones. So that impact through the bones causes the bones to secrete more of that prostaglandin E2, which then talks to the muscles and enhances muscle growth and repair. When you're doing impact exercises like power walking, dancing, jogging, heel drops, you're both promoting bone and muscle growth. Now, what seems to be the most effective for increasing the production of irisin from the muscles is resistance or strength training. So 
um, you know, lifting weights or body weight exercises or band exercises. But there's also been a study that showed that high intensity interval training, where you work really, really hard for a minute and then recover for a minute, and you do that multiple times, that also has the ability to increase irisin, le in irisin levels. The least effective exercise for the production of irisin from the muscles was low intensity exercise, such as walking or strolling. So if you're going out for a light walk, 20, 30 minutes a day, thinking you're building your bones, it's probably not enough. And although there is some evidence that walking can maintain bone mass, it certainly won't help to increase bone mass. You really need to be doing a combination of exercises, resistance or strength training, um, impact exercises, as well as exercises to improve your balance and your posture. So it can't be stressed enough that exercise has a profound effect on both bone and muscle health. And I think it's really important to remember that your bone density is very much related to your muscle strength. And exercise is the key to preventing osteosarcopenia or the loss of bone and muscle that leads to weakness and fragility and falls and fractures. Please reach out if you need guidance on what exercises you should be including into your weekly routine. And I can help you, you know, build a routine to ensure that you are building strong bones, strong muscles, and overall a strong body. You can email me at susan at nurturebones.com. Have a great day and a wonderful rest of your week.